we're back with Hank O'Neill, George Wetling, and his scrapbooks. Well, there were three scrapbooks of photographs. George um, had a modest camera. I have a f couple of pictures of him holding it that were taken by Milt Hinton, of all people, who was really quite a fine photographer who had a much better camera than George did. But George basically took three kind of pictures. He took pictures of his friends, who were musicians mostly, also lots of pictures of his wife and, and cats. He loved cats and dogs. Um, he took New York City scenes that are very uh, unlike what an amateur photographer would be doing. He was thinking about what he was doing and he was using the camera in the same way that Ben Sean did. It was a sketchbook. Uh, sometimes he'd be out on the street or something. Maybe he didn't have his little sketchbook and his pen or whatever. And he would take a hurried picture of, of a crane doing something in a building site um, or any number of other kind of topics. But he was a he took those pictures of New York, and then occasionally there are the, um, if he was on tour with Eddie Condon in England or something, he took a lot of pictures of that kind of thing. But basically, it was people and things in New York City. And it's the New York City stuff that um, ultimately would be of interest to uh, a museum or things like that. The pictures, the portraits that he did of musicians, some of, wh of which were outstanding, um, but uh, there is less interest in pictures of jazz musicians. I mean, there's a lot of interest within the jazz community, but I mean, in, in society as a whole, someone would more likely look at pictures of New York City than they would of Zooty Singleton. But, um, so, so there's this, this, this body of work, plus there's a, a, a secondary body of work, which was um, photographs of his pictures and extensive documentation of his friend Stuart Davis, who was his mentor from the standpoint of painting. Uh, a good George Wetling painting looks like a um, Stuart Davis painting, um, just not quite as perhaps sophisticated or, or whatever. But um, George was recognized as a, um, a serious artist. He had his first show in 1947, I believe it was. And this continued up through, I would say, the mid, like 1955, 56, 57. Um, and he had shows. He, occasionally sold something, but most of the pictures were given away. Um, we have records of what the pictures were, because un unhappily they're all in black and white. Um, but he, at some point, he made a, a big error in that he sent in, you may have seen them, I don't think they do it so much anymore, but in, in those days, I've seen them. There were ads in the back of magazines or on matchbook covers or something, you know, send in a dime and go to the famous artist school or something, and we'll teach you how to be a painter. Well, he sent in a dime. And we have examples in the scrapbooks of how these hack failed painters were trying to tell George how to make a painting. Prairie already had had serious shows, and it, and, and it declines from that point on. I think he became discouraged because the people at the famous, although there was a letter that I found in the files from the famous artist school said that, you know, we like this painting so much, we're going to give you a prize which will enable you to buy $50 worth of art supplies at the XYZ store or something like that. It was all very, very sad. But I mean, in the, at the time that this record, um, Wetling's jazz band, George Wetling's jazz band, came out to an old 10-inch Columbia, I guess from 51 or 2 or something. Um, the, um, there was a, a very popular magazine at the time called Collier's. This one has uh, Herbert Hoover on the front, and uh, he's telling everybody, um, oh, it's memoirs of Herbert Hoover. 
Uh, don't we wish we had Herbert Hoover right now? Um, but here's a, a two-page spread of of George Wetling playing with the band that's on Collier's Clam Bake and uh, the painting that was on the front of the and, and a picture of him painting. I mean, this is a, this was I guess about the third largest in terms of circulation magazine there was it behind Life and probably the Saturday Evening Post. I mean, it's a big deal. Um, so people were taking him kind of seriously. And this painting on the left, the, the, this right here, um, which he called Jazz is In. Um, I have um, notations from Stuart Davis's um, diary that on November 23rd or whatever day it was, I went over to George's and um, looked at the painting, thought it was really good, thought it could use a little work here and there, and I repainted part of it. So, I mean, this is 90% George Wetling and 10% Stuart Davis. Uh, and uh, so, anyway. So, so, so George was the real deal, um, and there are, um, let's see, where would, maybe in a, in a subsequent sequence I'll look through some of these scrapbooks and I can actually show you a picture of, of George at the easel, surrounded, I mean it was a publicity shot, surrounded by Condon and Pee Wee and Max Kaminsky or whoever, and they're all playing and George is painting. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's really uh, a, a lot of fun. But maybe it would be interesting to show what some of his photographs of musicians, since this is a, a jazz situation, what, it, what they look like. Now, um, oh, here, here is the, uh, the, uh, the diary entries from Stuart Davis. This was uh, April, Sunday, April the 1st. That's when he was doing the, the painting. Um, um, so <clears throat> George had those or you acquired them later? I acquired these later from um, Earl Davis, Stuart Davis's son who has been, um, Earl Davis is named Earl George Davis. Earl for Earl Hines, George for George Wetling, Davis for Davis. And um, yeah, he, he found these. He was going through, I mean, uh, there are, but I mean, this is a, a, a picture that uh, George has written on the back Two-thirds two of the George Wetling trio, Joe Sullivan on piano and Cecil Scott on clarinet. So George is not in the picture because he's behind the camera. And these are, are kind of falling apart, I'm sorry to say. This is a picture of Paul Smith, uh, not a name that pops right off but Paul was Eddie Condon's brother-in-law. Eddie was married to Paul's sister, Phyllis Smith. Here is a portrait that George did of Stuart Davis on the street somewhere. Um, and somewhere in New York City, I guess I should add. And here is, oh, this is the most famous of his. This is a portrait that George did of Stuart Davis and this photograph, when the Metropolitan Museum of Art did the big Stuart Davis show back in the early 90s, this photograph was blown about seven or eight feet tall and was by the entrance of the, of, of the exhibition. This is what they wanted Davis to look like at that show. And the... Um, Sometimes they were famous musicians, sometimes not. This is a man named Dick Carey who played with the Condon Mob. This is um, Bud Freeman, looking very dapper and uh, Bud Freeman-ish. Uh, but you see, there, there's a wonderful, funny story that, um, that Eddie told me about George concerning <laughs> one night they had played at Condon's and this was at the time when Bud was uh, 
married to some fancy South American lady, and he she chauffeured him around and, and things like that. And at the close of working hours at two in the morning, um, George was found um, passed out in a telephone booth at Condon's. And his head was down like that, and he had sort of vomited and soiled himself. And um, they didn't know what they were going to do with him. Well, Bud was just getting in his fancy car. <laughs> and I don't know who it was, but somebody at the club said, Oh, Bud, could you give George a ride home? And they like, Yes, of course. And they grabbed George, and they picked him up out of the phone booth and hauled him down the stairs and threw him in the back seat of the limousine that was carrying Bud away with his his uh, well-to-do bride. Uh, here is Jean Krupa, uh, which is sort of a, 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 a quite a lovely picture, actually. This is um, George occasionally, George didn't make this print. I think he, uh, I, I found a number, of, he saved all the bags that he sent to the photo finishers. Unfortunately, most of the pictures and we have about 1,400 pictures that George took. We have about 400 negatives. I mean, like the negative of this still exists. And it's not a 35 millimeter negative. It's a funny size. It's a little bit bigger. I, I, I'm not a photo historian, so I don't. Oh, here's Duke Ellington. Um, and this is. George loved this because there are multiple copies of this one. He, he put his drums up in front of a big Buddha, um, which <laughs> means, you know, I mean, he set this thing up. He thought it was fun. And let's see if there are any other, oh, yeah, here are a couple. Yeah, well, this, this, this is good because here is Zudi, but he's outside uh, a club which is listing all the other artists that are going to be performing there. And this is the kind of thing that he would take photographs of a Stuart Davis painting. And there are many, many of those. And in a couple of instances, he has photographs of Davis paintings that they don't know where the painting is. And I mean, this is when they did the catalog resume for Stuart Davis, which is, you know, this big. Um, they. I mean, here are unknown pictures, and the only thing that is known is there's a black and white by. Uh, oh, here's a here. This is a beauty. There's Jack Teagard from a session that they were on together. And let's see if. Um, well, I just showed you that 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 Jack Teagarden. Um, look at this. This is this is kind of interesting. If I can make this work. This book, unhappily, is simply falling apart. Um, if I take some of these out, maybe, I guess this proves that I'm not well prepared. Um, there. That Jack Tea Garden I just showed you, this is the way that it appears in the scrapbook, that little bitty picture in the corner. That's the way the pictures came back from the drugstore. And what he would do, he would bunch things together. I mean, in this case, on this page, he would put, you know, the two strippers together and then the signs together. Um, on on the, uh, the back page of that, there's a couple of musician people, you know, with Bud and, and uh, I think it's Bud. Yeah, Bud and Jack T. Garden. Down here at the bottom is Lynn Gaskins. This is Marshall Stearns. Um, this is Milt Hinton. And uh, there is a, a sequence of, of uh, pictures from um, Condon's. Before we, before we get to that, let's yeah. pause for a second. Okay. 